that was it. <laughs> Done. Cool. So, so now we're going to jump into some advanced endgames. Okay, so for those of you who were here uh, when I started the basic endgames, yeah, yeah, yeah. So rook takes e f4 was the problem versus queen e2. Yeah, no problem. So what we did with the basic endgames is I started you guys off explaining, you know, what is opposition, you know, how to queen a pawn, etc. Right now in advanced endgames, of course, we will look at much more complicated endgames. Okay, but I, of course, will still explain stuff. This will not take over the basic endgames. Okay, I will do... Let me do this right in my head now. Today's Wednesday for me. So I will do um, basic endgames. I will do f on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. No, 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 no. Like that, right? Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Saturdays, boys. Okay. And then uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, I will do advanced endgames. Okay. No, Wednesdays and Fridays. Sorry. There we go. I had to figure it out. What was it Mondays and Wednesdays? I don't know. I can't remember anymore. Yes, Mondays and Wednesdays, I will do advanced endgames, okay? So advanced endgames, of course, is much more complicated, okay? Yeah, new bow, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, but first, first, yeah, okay. Don't just look at just variations, okay? And new bow, you have to be careful here. You're looking for an ex-girlfriend... <laughs> <laughs> Groucho, um, send me send me a private message. I'm sure we can work something out, buddy. Okay, might cost you a little, but I'm sure we can organize something. Okay. I uh, I've been known to dabble. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, so when we look at end games like this, right, we can see, of course, that white is losing technically right so if it is white to play in a puzzle like this it means that white needs to find a way to draw okay so our problem is is that if we go for this pawn and then come back for this one look at how many moves that takes you okay it takes one two three four five six and seven moves to win the pawn so we can do a quick count here how long it's going to get them to take come here so check this out so one two three four five Okay. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. Are we doing a little bit of pun pun jokes? Huh? Is that what we're doing? And note in the end of this position, by the way, that black will want to go here where white will, will not be able to go here. Okay. This is something called reciprocal zugzwang. Okay, so I'll show you an example. Like, let's say we go here. Da, 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 da. We can just show the variations. That's not a problem. Take here, takes, and then here. Okay, so obviously we are just way too slow. Notice that the black pawn is going this way, just in case anybody was wondering. Okay. Yeah, chess network. Jerry is the guy who does chess network, yeah. Okay, so that would lose for white. So the question is, how does white save this position? The trick is that white should go after this pawn first, not that one. So what white does is he goes this way. Okay, now if the king goes here, there, here, there. And of course, we just win the pawn, right? And now it's equal. Okay. Now, if we go here and you push the pawn, then the pawn is much closer than it was before. Okay? Now we could go back. Because now, if the pawn's here, let's look at the variation just so you can see it, right? If the pawn is here, it'll take us one, two, three, four, five, six moves to get here. Where one, two, three, four, five. But we move first as well. So look at the variation. Now, if he goes here, we can play here. And we actually win. Ah, ah, ah. Because now, of course, you cannot defend your pawn and attack the pawn at the same time anymore. So you move, I take it, and of course, 
now I just run. Everybody's talking about some very weird stuff here. Okay, so this variation doesn't work. Okay, and of course, if he tries to run in here, like I pointed out, if he comes here now, then you can just go for this pawn. And now white should easily draw. <coughs> okay. So the trick here is to understand which way or which pawn you should be going for first. Okay. And in most end games, of course, you can calculate everything. It's just a numbers game. It becomes a big numbers game. Because you calculate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 moves. He goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 moves. And if you move first, then of course 8 beats 7. You know, then you'll get that quicker. Game okay, life is practice. That's true, of course. Of course, you know, it is a lot of practice. So this, this puzzle wasn't that hard, but they become much harder very quickly. Okay, so how's about this one? Let me ask you guys, what do you think the idea will be here for white to try and draw this game? Again, you're down a pawn. If black can manage to get in here. <sighs> well, of course, he's going to be able to push you back and you are going to be dead. So it's white to play here and draw. How does white try and draw here? Anybody know? My beard is out of control and it's itching my nose. Stop it, beard. Stop it. You need to comb this bad boy. <laughs> you guys are terrible. Poor, poor deaf people, man. Poor deaf people. So let's see if we can get anybody who's actually focused on chess here. <laughs> it's white to play and draw. How does white go about drawing this position? And this is very cute because it's all about getting the king on the specific square where you can eventually get into either a drawn king and pawn in game or where you can keep the opposition and win both of these pawns. That is the idea here. Okay, are there any shortcuts we took we can look at? For example, Dr. Hack talked about the bar rule and Vichy Anant talks about the box rule where if the king is in the same box, pass pawn, you're on time to catch, but if the king is outside... Yeah, of course, the box rule, of course, is very simple. The, the box rule is very, very easy, Mar. Uh, you know, you literally just, like, if we take this pawn, right, the box would technically be here. Okay? Depending on which side your king is. Of course, here in this case, our king is on this side, right? So as long as the black king is in this box, being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, including this square again, okay? Then he is in the box means that even if he was here, you'd play here, he'd play here, you'd play here, he'd play there, you'd play here, he'd there, and he's in the box, as you can see. Okay, so he's easily in the box. So yes, Anand's box method is definitely the easiest way to see whether a king can catch a passed pawn. Okay, that's step one. Step two, when we're looking at passed pawns, well, okay, I'll get there when we have a position with pass pawns, okay? Which we will get, I promise. Okay? Here, yes, it is very important for white to pin down the black king. You can't allow him to play king here and pawn push here. So your first move is fairly simple. But after that, we need to be exceptionally clever about how we push the D pawn. Okay? It's going to be all about the right positioning of the black king. So if we go king e6, he goes king here, right? Simple, okay? If he goes king other way, we can take the pawn. If he push, we push, 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 and push. 
So we both queen at the same time and it's a draw. Um, no, Mark, King G6 will end up losing the position because then the king will get here. That's unfortunate because then the king is out. You want to pin the king down. So by after king e6, the king now has to defend this pawn. So now it has to play here. But for us, we want to trade off this pawn for this pawn, but at the right time. Okay? And the right time is that when we play here, sorry, when we eventually play here, the king needs to be here or here. So we need to make sure that we get the right timing here which means we have either this move or this move as our first option when we push the pawn. So, if we play d4, king goes here, here, king goes back, here, now we're actually not drawing. Because now after takes, if we take, then the king can come here, defend his pawn, and work around and still win the position. And same with the other variation. We took this, you know, if we took this pawn, the king could come around here and help his pawn. So d4 is incorrect because we need to have the king on this square or this square when we get here. So we play d3 instead. d3, king goes here. d4, king goes back. d5, king goes here again. And then d6. Now if the pawn takes, we takes, and his king is here. Now if he goes king e8, we go king e6, and we win the pawn on f6 as well. Okay? Anubab! Thanks, Anubab. Hi! Welcome to the show. Uh, if you guys are new and you're not following the channel yet, uh, you know, just go on Twitch and follow the channel. Please, boys and girls. Okay, so the correct move is d3. Okay, so king goes, let's say here, pawn, king goes here, pawn, king goes here, pawn, takes and takes, and now you can't survive, this pawn cannot survive, king here, king here, so it's all about opposition in order to draw this position, and of course if he went the other way with the king, it doesn't really matter, let's just look at it like this, the king went this way, same thing, if he takes, we take this pawn, and now we have opposition again, and we can come back for this pawn. Very, 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 very cool little position just to show you how you can trap the guy's king and then use make use of opposition in a different manner to force the pawns to get split up. Okay? And then you can take the one when his king is in opposition and you can come back and take the other. If at any given point in this position, by the way, black tries to, let's say, sacrifice the pawn, something like this, you can just take it, of course. So you'll always be able to just take that pawn. And like I pointed out here, if black tried this, um, just go back, after king e6, if black tries this, you can just take the pawn, because the race is equal, okay? We are at the same time queening on both sides of the board, which still means it's a draw. Now, you're still losing games there, Chesky. How dare you! Infidel! <laughs> okay. Check out the next puzzle. Let's do the next one. Okay, so here we have the same idea. Very much the same idea. So it again comes down to a situation where we need to be able to win the pawn at the right time. Can anyone see the idea here? It's the same idea as before, but we still have to be exceptionally clever about it. <laughs> here he will get the pawn, okay? But he will not be able to win with a king and pawn position. So our first move is obvious, right? We're going to play king f5. 
to attack the pawn. Now he has to defend the pawn. And now what do we do now? So I'll make the first two moves. Makes sense, of, sense right? Now what do we play for white now? This is where things get a little bit more tricky. Because we need to try and create the same situation as we had in the previous puzzle. Where opposition is our friend. Let's see if anybody can find this one. Looks like everybody is talking about all kinds of weird nonsense jokes, but uh, whatever. <laughs> Maybe I should start timing out people. Okay, but how, okay, so e7, if king goes here, now what? <laughs> yeah, but Mar, that is the point. He's going to eat it. Okay, he's going to eat the pawn, but... We need to be perfect about the move when we give it to him. Okay? Ooh, Railbird is on the f on the money, Railbird. Well done. On the money. Because Railbird understands or he heard me talking about opposition. So we can do this. And after he takes, we don't even take the pawn. We go king e6. How perfect is that move? That is a fantastically beautiful move. If he goes this way, we take it. If he goes this way, we take it. And if he pushes a pawn, we take it. He can still save the pawn. But here, he will not have his king in front of the pawn. Extremely important, remember? In order to win with the king and pawn versus king, you need to have your king in front of the pawn. You need to have opposition. And you need to have your king on the third or sixth rank. In this case, it would be the sixth, third rank because you're black. But if you have, you only need two of these rules in order to win. But you only have one because right now, well, actually, you have absolutely zero. <laughs> you don't have your king in front of the pawn. Okay, you do not have opposition. You can get opposition here. But after king here, now you cannot get a position. I have a position. So you don't have your king in front of the pawn. You don't have a position. And you don't have your king on the, th on the third rank. So you can't win with the pawn. So now we have this typical standoff where you come forward. I take a position. Every time your king comes forward, I take a position. You push the pawn. I stay in front of it. And again, I stay where you cannot take the opposition. Now if you go here or here, I go here or here. Simple. Yes, I will just now. Give me a little second. Okay. So, if we go back all the way again, we have a tough situation where we have to realize that winning the pawns immediately is not our objective. Our objective is to get the king in opposition. Because then he has to lose one of the pawns, but... He loses one of the pawns without getting his king in front of the pawn. This is what would happen if you do this wrong. If you take here, then he still has the option of getting in front of the pawn. Look at this. Now he's in front of the pawn. Huge difference. Now suddenly the game has taken a turn. For the worst. Okay, because now if you go here, he takes opposition. Now his king is in front of the pawn and he has opposition as well. Now suddenly he's actually winning. And there was no, there's no way for you to stop this from happening because your king cannot go to this square or this square. So you have to go the long way around and his king is going to get in front. If you play here, then he just plays here. And he just keeps going on with the opposition in a different way. So this is the problem. So this is why you cannot take that pawn. But 
By playing king e6, you're suddenly forcing him to either lose both pawns, because like, let's say he goes here, you just take this one. And now we have that same situation where he can't defend the pawn, nice and simple. And of course, in any other variation, if he pushes the pawn, your king is much easier to get in front of the pawn and prevent his king from getting to any of the key squares. That's very important. So now his king cannot get to any of the key squares in front of the pawn. If you obviously watch the beginner or the basics, the endgame basics variation that we did, then you'll understand what key squares are as well. So that's why these lessons do kind of interlink or they'll eventually catch up to each other, you know, so I do the basics, but I do advanced ones as well. Okay. Cool and glorious. I am glad if you guys are enjoying it. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next one. These are not so hard, but they are definitely a bit more advanced because you need to be able to do a lot more calculation in these. So here we have another typical situation. Okay. Typical situation again, right? We are down a pawn, so we have two versus three. Okay, but we have a pass pawn. Extremely important. Our trick question here is, of course, is we cannot go here, here, because he has a pass pawn. <laughs> so it's going to become this very entertaining question of how long does it take us to go one, two, three, Let's say four, five, six, seven. Okay, it takes us seven moves. But of course, the first one is free, right? So it'll take us one, two, three, four, five, six moves, and it will be check. Okay, so on the sixth move, it will be check. Very important, extremely important. When we look at pass pawns, okay, pass pawn, pass pawn. The next thing that we want to know about pass pawns is check squares. So we are finally in a position where we have pass pawns. So check squares is very important. It's very important to note that if this pawn were to promote either one of them, it would be check, okay? Whereas in this situation, if our king is, let's say here, then on any of these squares after our king has moved, it this would not be a check square when this pawn gets here. So you're not going to be in check. If we just do the basic calculation here, okay, then you'll notice the following. If we, let's say, leave the king here, right? We need one, two, three, four, five, six moves, and it'll be checked. But as soon as we take here, he'll go here. Let's make it blue. We go here, he goes here. We move, say here, there, sorry, here, there, here, there and here. It's check, yes, but he also has his queen on the board. So, this leaves us with our question. The trick question, the trick here is, and you asked about this earlier, Mar, is about the box. Now, the box is very important in this position. Why? For the following reason. This pawn, here is the box for that pawn. Okay? So as long as the white king is anywhere within here, let's make it green. As long as the white king, uh, green, sorry. As long as the white king is anywhere within these squares, then he will be safe to catch the pawn. Okay. Well, hello there, Inglorus. Thank you, sir. Thou shalt not pass. <laughs> Okay, so that is the first thing we need to know about this position. Our king can roam around anywhere here, and the black pawn will not be able to run away from our king. Okay, step one. <laughs> okay, that means if we can get this pawn to move and then come back for it, then we win this position. Why? Let's say the pawn is here. And our king comes and eats it, goes here, 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 and push. Okay, so our objective as white is to make this pawn move. Now, can anybody tell me how we will accomplish this feat? How do we make the pawn on the d-file move for black? 
That is the question you need to answer. How do we do it, yo? How do we do it? This is how we do it, yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's new, Mar. We added it today. Or did we add it yesterday? I don't know. We added it somewhere today or yesterday. No, we added it today, yeah. I'm glad you like it. So let's see if anybody... Hey, hello there. Why Walk Game... Let me see the whole name, sorry. Why Walk Gaming. Welcome to the channel, Why Walk Gaming. Uh, I know that you're new, so if you want to do yourself and me a favor, then um, then give us a follow on Twitch. If you're watching from Lee Chess right now, then just click on the text at the bottom of the video that says follow chess doctors on Twitch. And then, yeah, you will just follow the prompts and you will be here. Hello there. Um, and yes, new bomb, you are right. King e6 is a beautiful move. But how do we continue it? So, okay, king e6 is easy. Okay, good. Okay, so our idea. Um, Groucho, thanks for the follow. And Silver Plate, thanks for the follow, guys. Really appreciate it. Okay, so you guys are saying we're going to stay on these squares. But what is our next step? So, yes, our king is going to stay on the 6th rank. What is the next step? Broben, welcome to the show as well. I'm pretty sure I have not seen that name yet either. So for all of you, if you're not following the channel yet in Twitch, please do. Thank you, Anasazi. I was wondering about that as well. Every now and then somebody pops up the stats and I get to see that there are quite a lot of people watching. Thank you. There we go, Broben. Thank you so much. And Walk Gaming. Thanks for the follow, guys. <sighs> <laughs> Check out little poor guy fall. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. Uh, okay, okay. Let me show you an example, right? Let me show you an example, right? So let's say I go here. Let's say I go here. Let's say I go here. You run. I can come back for the pawn. Okay, just as an example. You see, because the pawn cannot get away from me. Okay, so as long as I stay in this box with my king, then the pawn cannot get away from me. Okay, it's very important, exceptionally important to note. Okay, just so you see it. So after we go king e6, okay, first of all, our goal is to keep the black king on the eighth rank and our king on the sixth rank. Okay, 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 you, you're kind of correct, Mar, but you have to be careful with where he goes. If he goes this way, what do we play first? Because the problem is, is that, again, our king cannot go anywhere forward. Because then the pawn runs. Okay. Okay, good. But just remember that our king cannot go forward. Okay. Andre Gorilov. Thanks for the follow, Andre. So, we cannot allow this king to do this. This would be a disaster. So, we have to keep his king in the 8th rank whilst keeping our king in the sixth rank and then of course getting our pawn to push as well so the key here is to keep his king back so if we go here right if he goes here we have to still be careful okay then we go here again and now the point is of course now the pawn can just shovel shovel up the board okay so if the king goes this way and he runs like that way just as an example, why is this? Okay, then we can just, you know, he's way too slow, right? Like now he's too far behind with his own pawn. Yes, good guys, good, perfect, yeah. So we need to make sure we keep his king on the 8th rank. Okay, that's going to be very important. If the king wants to run this way out or whatever, you know, doesn't matter because then we can just run with the pawn. We will win that race. So again, an example is like this. Let's say the king goes here. We go here now. If the king, king comes here, we go here. Even if he plays here, we can even... Okay, we can take it, take it. And of course, our pawn is too quick. Okay, so his king can never run to that side of the board because he always has to worry about the h-pawn. Okay, so now we look at an example again. 
Now we continue on here. So here, here, here. Now let's say the king goes here. We play h4. King goes here, we play h5. King goes here, we play h6. King goes here. Now, here, here. And now what do we do? What do we do as white now? Now we've reached our first goal. We have used our outside pass pawn as a decoy. I have said this before in the basic end games as well, is that pass pawns in general get used as decoys. So what do we play for white now? What was our intention? What was our first goal? What did we want to achieve? Yes, exactly. We did want to do that, but we needed him to move this pawn, right? Okay, now we're going to look at it, right? Okay, so now he pushes and now we come back. Okay, that's the goal, right? Uh-oh, what went wrong? <laughs> what went wrong, guys? What went wrong? I had to make sure you guys first fall for this trap before we did. Okay, perfect. But this still doesn't work, right? Because black is too quick to come and defend f8. So what could we have done differently? How could we have saved our king to be one move quicker than we had in the actual position that we just showed? Ah, Dre Andre, thank you. Okay, so what is Andre saying? Andre is saying, again, it is important to note where the king will be when our pawn gets here. So instead of playing h4, we can play h3, which is an extra move, which will force his king to be on h8 already when we move h7. So check this out now, h3. Just check the difference, here, 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 and here. Now look at the big difference. Our king is not on h6 when we start running to eat the pawns. Our king is on g6, so we are one move quicker now. <laughs> you see? Now, of course, it's still stalemate, so we have to move the pawn. And now we come here, and we're a whole move quicker now. Da, 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 da. There we go. There it is. Okay. Very cool, right? And, of course, we just go here, and we're already protecting all the key squares. Uh, why walk gaming? Of course, we can take on passant if he plays c5. So let's say he tries this c5. Then, of course, we can play on passant. Yeah. And then, of course, we just made him. Ha <laughs> ha. GG. Take a look just for fun. Uh, it's made. Okay. So if we go back here, it was again extremely important for us to see where we would stalemate. So this is the stalemate trick, right? And our king would then be quicker to get to the pawn. So now he has to play here. And of course, now it doesn't matter. There's no way for him to prevent us from just eating all the pawns. There. <laughs> That's it. There's no way for him to stop that from happening now. Okay? Very, very interesting position. But it's exceptionally important. Step one in this situation, okay, is to trap the king on the eighth rank. Force the king to have to be there to try and stop the h pawn. Okay, that's step one. We at, If at any point he plays here, we just take. 
because now we can just go and eat these pawns and push through because we still have the threat of this outside h pawn. So he can't just ignore you. Okay. And the same problem is he can never play here, of course, because we can just on passant. Now if he goes here, we can just push. Because, of course, his king is way too far to stop this pawn and that pawn at the same time. Okay. The king gets stretched, stretched too thin. So his only option is to try and sneak in front of this pawn. Which, of course, if he never pushes this pawn, we can never go for this pawn. Okay? But we don't allow him to gain access to the H pawn. And now, of course, even if he goes here, we just have to be very careful with where we get his king when we put the stalemate on the board, forcing him to move his D pawn. Which is what our goal was in the very first beginning. So yeah, so now you have to do this calculation in your head, which is a bit scary, right? You have to do this calculation where if I go h4, he goes here. If I go here, he goes here. If I go here, he goes back. If I go here, he goes back. And now his king would be here. My pawn would be here. And sorry, let's put a blue. And my king would be here. And now in order to get the stalemate, I would have to play king here. And my king is very far away from his pawn. And then we saw the calculation, what happened in our head. We can do it as well. If he goes here, we go away. He takes, we go, he goes, we go, he goes, we take, he goes. We attack his pawn and he defends the pawn. Oops. And that was not good enough. So now in our calculation in our head, we have to start counting a different variation. We go, okay, I don't have to play h4. I can play h3. And now we start looking at the exact same variation. Go back, go here, king, pawn push. Now his king is here, pawn is here and king is here, and it is his move. It's already stalemate. The pawn pushed into stalemate. Okay, very important. Now, of course, when he moves here, we are one rank, sorry, we are one file, my bad, closer to the pawns on the queen side. Okay. So again, I'm just going to show that. H3, we go here, he goes here. Da, 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 da. If he goes here, of course, we just queen, because now the king cannot go there. So he has to go here, and we still made him already. And now we are one file closer, so he cannot save his pawn. And that's it. Okay. Quite complicated, I know. But you guys can always go back into the video and come and check it out again. If you want to, these videos are available on Twitch, uh, just in the highlight section. Uh, I will even make a playlist for these videos as well. So end games will have its own little uh, collection. There will be an end games collection, middle games collection, etc. Okay, let's see if we can fit in one more before we finish. We have the same situation again. So the question is, can we win and how? If it's white to play here, what does white play? Uh, what's the idea for white here? <laughs> it's quite tough, Mar. I, I, I realize that these positions are quite tricky, okay? But, you know, if, if you need me to slow down or if you want me to explain something again or whatever, you can just ask, okay? This counts for all of you. If you guys want me to redo something or just, you know, explain something again or whatever, just ask me. I would be more than happy to do it. So, and you'll also notice that these puzzles kind of follow on top of each other, okay? Same with the basics endgame stuff that we do. They follow on top of each other. Okay, Anasazi says he wants to play g5. Why? Because he wants to fix the pawns here and be able to en passant if those pawns ever move. Thank you, Lennox. I am very happy if you guys enjoy it. Okay. Uh, again, I just mentioned, if you guys have not followed us on Twitch yet, please do. Uh, you know, obviously, the bigger our follower count gets, the better chances we have of becoming a partner streamer with Twitch. 
which of course gives us more money and that makes it much easier for us to obviously you know keep on doing this for free okay so by playing g5 first now these pawns cannot move because we can on passant aha what is the square that black's king is restricted to excellent question dre dre so black's king two 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 okay then you can do the same on the other side two 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 so five there is five of them here and five of them here so if the king let's say was here right because now we've done it right so let me just do it again so one two three four five one two three four five okay you got it okay so i'm going to draw the block now for you bloop 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 and we'll draw it like that okay so there is your block <laughs> donks for me unfortunately you're a little bit late but of course you can just go and watch the video afterwards as well donks for me okay so so dre so this is what the box would look like which means that if the king is on any one of these squares the black king now okay the black king is in any one of these squares inside this box that we have created then the black king would be able to catch the pawn okay so let's put the king over here let's uh, let's ignore any and all other pieces right if the pawn moves king goes pawn moves king goes pawn moves king goes pawn moves and king catches okay Um, well, that depends on whether you win the prize. It's going to be completely... Uh, I'm going to spin a wheel, Chesky. We're going to spin a wheel. Uh, thank you so much, Donks, for me. Thanks for the bits. Okay. So that is how that works, Dre. You just count the amount of squares in front of the pawn that you are wanting to know whether you can catch. Then you count the exact same amount of squares next to that pawn. And then you draw a box. And the simple rule is, is if the king is in the box or can get into the box if the pawn is supposed to move, then he can catch the pawn. Okay, that's the rule. So if the pawn moves, the box obviously becomes smaller. So again, if we put the king over here, we move here. Now suddenly the box would be here. Right? But the king can still get into the box. So he moves into the corner into the last little space of that box. Okay? But he's in the box. Okay? Now when the pawn moves here, let's put it in blue, the box gets smaller. But if the king was here, then he'd be able to get in the box. Again, just, just sneakily pips into that box. Okay? Now if we put the pawn here, we have the same thing. The box gets smaller. But, again, the king was here, so he'd get into the box. So, yeah. Yeah, Andre Gore, of course. So, G5 wins the game. We understand that. Okay? Conveniently outside of the box. Yes, yes, Dre. Excellent, excellent, excellent spotting that you can see that the g pawn is out of the box. Yes. But it wouldn't have mattered, Dre, because even if you do go all this way, of course, if you move away, then, of course, you're putting your king away from the box and if i move my pawn the box gets smaller right so you have to be extremely careful as the box gets smaller as well so yes it does take away your options but yes the g pawn is not in the box you are extremely correct on that one the g pawn is not in the box <laughs> okay but yes by playing g5 now we fix the pawns now this one pawn the solo pawn here is keeping all the black pawns at bay now, this king still needs to stay with this pawn. So all we have to do now is the same as we did in the previous position. Put the guy in stalemate because then he'll be forced to play one of these pawns. Okay. So and a simple example would be something like, Oh, no, 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 whatever.
whatever we do we just shove up here like all the way because <laughs> there's nothing he can do and we can even still make Ta -da! because he has two pawns that he can push so by pushing the one we take it and now of course he has two pawns so you push we go we push and of course we make so it's it's actually not a very tough puzzle but the point is just understanding that you can use the move g5 to completely paralyze these pawns on the side of the board. And of course, if he tries to play here, you can on pass on. So now we try, and of course the king is also not in the box. After g5, the king is not in the box of this pawn. So this would be the box of this pawn, right? So notice that the king is not inside the box of that pawn. Very important. Now let's say he tried to go here into the box of the pawn. Okay. Then we can just play here. Because now if he goes closer here, he'll take himself out of the box here. So he has to be extremely careful how he moves, right? So here he would still be in the box, right? So he's still in the box. Just, just, just. Just, just, just in the box still. But now, let's say we move our king. If he moves here, now he's not in the box anymore. So now, of course, we can just charge with the pawn. Because he's not in the box anymore, so we can just win. Okay? And we also want to be a little bit careful, of course, if he tries to be sneaky like this, that we don't play this pawn too far. Because we also need to make sure that we can still defend the pawn. That is just the only other important thing that we have to be careful of. So using your king is perfectly acceptable because this king cannot go too far away. Okay. Of course you will still have a little bit of work to do if he goes for this pawn on your queen. But it should be fairly easy enough to do. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Dre, <laughs> Dre, you're going to start making me feel bad, Dre. Like every... <laughs> You're really going to start making me really feel bad, dude. <laughs> I really do appreciate it, though, Dre. I really do. Okay. I, I, you know, I was working out today and I was thinking to myself that if I literally, if I can, you know, it doesn't matter how many hours a day I stream, right? If I make $20 a day, then I would be seriously happy with my streaming. Because $20 a day, right? I, it doesn't sound like a lot to anybody, of course, okay? But $600 a month? In my country where I live in South Africa, it's actually a pretty decent salary. Okay. Um, I mean, $600 a month covers my, my food, my rent, my pretty much everything. Literally, $600 a month covers all my basic nonsense. You know, your, your general expenses and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, so $20 a day for me as a streamer, $20 a day is enough. That's, that's, that's my goal. Like if I can just get up to that, then I am exceptionally happy so at this point you're paying my 20 dollars every day don't do it dre don't do it i love you man but you don't have to do it <laughs> thanks buddy um okay so g5 was a very very pretty move there to just paralyze the pawns on this side and then you can just force him into a zugzwang position uh, with by using stalemate just like we did in the previous position when he now has to move one of his pawns and in this case of course by moving one of these pawns we will either on passant or just take <laughs> thanks dogs for me <laughs> you guys are so sweet i really do appreciate it guys really um you know i i uh bits dre it's basically just the twitch currency but the difference dre though um, is that it costs you more, you as a person, as you, Dre, it'll cost you more to donate, to donate the same amount. So instead of $10, it's going to cost you $14 to donate $10 worth of bits. So every 100 bits is worth... We are all moving to South... <laughs> yeah, you guys are welcome. Move over. Move over to South Africa. I'm very happy to have you all here. Um... So yeah, so bits, by the way, Dre, basically uh, every bit is worth one cent. So 100 bits is worth a dollar. 1,000 bits is worth $10, simple. But again, for you to acquire bits costs you more 
than it is to donate. And the other thing as well, at this point, just so you guys know how it, Twitch works, because we're not a partner streamer, we have to share 50% of all the bits we make with Twitch. So that means if you donate $10 in bits, I only get $5. So that's that's maybe something you didn't know, Dongs for me, is that if you donate 100 bits, I only get 50 bits. No, nope, it's only 50. Because we're not a partner with Twitch. Whereas a donation, of course, is straight up everything. Of course, if you send 100k bits, then it's $100. Well, 100k, that's $1,000. <laughs> MK or for... I have a coffer bird little blur. Yeah, we have to share bits. And we have to share... Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that sucks. Yeah, so, so bits and subscribers, right? Bits and subscribers, we have to share 50% with uh, with Twitch. Um, Donks for me, we only have one more. Okay, guys, so we only have one more achievement. Um, no, 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 Dre, Bits is actually very cool. When you're a partner streamer, Bits is perfect. It's the same then. Then Bits is exactly the same. Then, then 100 Bits is worth a dollar for the streamer, okay? But as an affiliate, because we're not a Twitch partner yet, we have to share 50-50. So right now it kind of sucks still, you know? We haven't actually spent any of the bits or anything that we have, sub money, bit money. We've just been gathering it because we are waiting until we get <laughs> uh, partner status before we draw the money. Because then we get 100%. <laughs> so we're just being extremely clever about it. But of course, if you if you donate right away like you're doing right now, then the streamer gets the money directly, no problems. The other bad downside as well to Twitch money, bits, uh, subscriptions is that it takes two months two months 60 days before you get the money just so you guys know that as well which kind of sucks but of course you know as you grow and you get big you know what i mean then of course you know you wait for two months and you have a couple of thousand dollars then of course you have your your monthly money comes over the whole time 